Hello and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. How you doing, everybody? I'm doing good. <laughs> I represent everybody at yeah. this point, and we are all doing good and probably in bed right now. I'm Scott Ramph. And I'm Josh Many. And we're here to talk about a lot of different stuff. Uh, we got stuff about school boards meeting last night, which got pretty intense about Title I. I'll explain that more later. Uh, we got uh, a lot of contests that are coming to a close this coming this next week, the 21st and 22nd. We have both high school film festival coming to an end to submit it, oh, and yeah. the Creative Cat film contest is coming to a close. So hundreds of dollars worth of prizes that you can get either by being a high school student or being anybody with a cat. Anybody with a cat, any, it just the or film has to, ha, has to have a cat somewhere indirectly or directly involved with it. And um, Josh has a little. Uh, bit of information about State of the Community. So yeah, State of the Community that. is a really important event coming up. It's going to be held at the City Club of Mi uh, Missoula on City Monday. Club. City Club. City Club. City. <laughs> Let's just call it City Club. That's what it's called, people. Let's be real. But uh, it's going to be held at City Club on April 14th at 11.30 a.m. and it's going to feature Mayor John Engen, U.M. President Royce Engstrom, and County Commissioner Michelle Lindquist, each discussing work from the past year and the year to come. One of the big issues uh, issues that they're going to be talking about is the Lolo to Missoula Trail, which I really care about as a cyclist. They're also going to be talking about purchase of mountain water. There goes our sign. Purchase of mountain water and $11 million in new scholarships. So it's going to be in really interesting. Think of it as like State of the Union when, uh, you know, the president speaks, but this is State of the Union in Missoula with three of our, our city's leaders. So it's going to be a big deal. Yep, I was going to bring up the schedule for what's going on on MCAT today, um, but I don't know exactly. All i got to say is that my documentary is playing tonight at 9 p.m. Very cool. Very so cool. What's your documentary seven. about? My documentary is about a little bit of the Buddy DeFranco Jazz Festival that I shot a couple years ago, and, I'm, and, I premier, and it premieres on MCAT this week. The other showing was this last Wednesday, and I think tonight is the one where it premieres at six, 9 p.m. again, running time. The running time is an hour and 30 minutes. But as I keep talking, I'm going to realize that we're running out of time for my segment and I just want to end it with a little bit of flagship video of the week. So this is the flagship video of the week and oh, I want to Sorry do a little that. brief talk about it. It's basically a spoof on Robocop and it stars Neil, one of our flagship Kid Cans, and this was edited by Christian Ackerman, so enjoy. And right after this, we have a interview with Steve Schmidt and Brandy Tyree with uh, um, Missoula Forum for Children and Youth. Children and Youth, and Josh will be interviewing for that. And enough talking about me, I'm just gonna show after I'm done telling, and cool. I just told you, so here's my showing. Let's take a look. He was just a normal, happy-go-lucky and kid until his peers betrayed him. No! Murphy. Why can't I move? 
What are these? It's a, what kind of suit is this? It's not a suit. It's you. Now, Murphy, with great power comes great responsibility. Isn't that from a Spider-Man film? Hello? I think you're different, but I like you better anyways. Okay, let's go. Remember, Murphy, you were programmed to be the perfect student. Yes, but first I will get revenge on the ones who did this to me. Okay, well, we're here with Steve Schmidt and Brandy Tyree from Missoula Forum for Children and Youth. How are you guys doing today? Good morning. Wonderful. Well, tell me, what, you, what are you guys up to? What is Missoula Forum for Children and Youth? Steve, go ahead. Well, the Missoula Forum for Children and Youth, we're a county organization underneath the uh, grants and community programs. Uh, we deal with a variety of different organizations around town that work with children and youth. Uh, we have three different work groups, uh, one being MUSAP, which is the Missoula Underage Substance Abuse Prevention Program, uh, which Brandy is in charge of, and she'll speak more about that here. Uh, we also have the Youth Development Network and the Best Beginnings, which is Early Childhood Development, like zero to eight. Great, great. So um, I know that we're here to talk about um, pres pres prescription drug. It's hard to say. I had that problem yesterday. <laughs> prescription drug. Uh, uh, prevention, misuse prevention, or what is it, pre pre prescription drug misuse, misuse awareness, awareness week. Yep. week, correct, and that's uh, Missoula Children for Form and Youth along with Missoula Underage Substance Abuse Prevention, which you're the coordinator of? Yeah, so we're a work group underneath the forum, and uh, it's the work group is basically like a coalition, but we use the word work group, and it's community members all around Missoula and Missoula County that just really care about kids and their health, and we focus on underage substance abuse because there's other great groups in town that focus on nutrition and health and tobacco, and so we come together with that main focus. Very cool, very cool. Well, um, I know that the county commissioners and Mayor John Engen proclaimed that uh, this week is coming up. Tell us about that. Yeah, and thanks for being at the county commissioner meeting. Yeah, so the county commissioners and their Mayor Engen on the city council meeting this coming Monday are proclaiming that next week, April 14th through the 19th, is Prescription Drug Misuse Awareness Week. And so with that, with so many fiscal partners and community partners and collaborators, we are, we've put together just a week of awareness um, activities, if you will, to just get the word out there about what prescription drug misuse is, and then we hope that will lead into a deeper conversation about abuse down the road. Okay, so tell me, what are some of the featured events of this week? 
Oh my gosh, it's so exciting. So we start off with the city council meeting and we'll be giving a presentation at city council um, about what is prescription drug misuse, what it looks like, and our local information. We believe firmly that of course Missoulians want to know about what's going on in Missoula. And then we are bringing in a speaker from Chicago. We really wanted to mix what's going on in the nation with what's going on locally. So the speaker is, we're having a summit on Wednesday for professionals, about 150 people from around the state are coming. And we, again, mixing his expertise as he travels the country, but then we also will have a local panel. And actually the Attorney General is coming to join us for that on Wednesday morning, which we're just so grateful for his time. Then Wednesday night, we're gonna have a, a community conversation that's free and open to the public at City Life at 7 o'clock and everyone's welcome to come and listen to um, what some of the experts have to say but most importantly say what they want to say and ask questions um, give us feedback tell us what's going on in their lives around this issue uh, it's free there's always snacks and we really design it around a conversation everybody has an equal say in what's going on in our community Wow, that sounds really great. Um, so tell me, how are a few ways that you know to keep prescription drugs out of our, our youth's hands? Yeah, well the first and foremost, which seems a little counterintuitive because we might use them every day, every day but is to keep them up and away. Really ideally it would be to lock them in a lock box. Um, your medicine cabinet in your bathroom actually isn't the best place for your prescriptions or your family. They should be in a, a dry, cool place. Um, and so locking them up would be great, keeping them up in a way would be perfect, and also having a medication log so you know what you have and how much you have. So if un, you know, accidentally your five-year-old, or even, we were talking about this yesterday, even your dog got into them, it would be hard to tell a vet in their emergency room what they got into if you didn't know how many you had left um, or exactly what kind you had. So those would be the first ways. Then lastly, proper disposal would just be amazing if everybody would consider. And one of the easiest ways to do that is to take your unused and unneeded medications, your pills, and you can drop them off at our police department 24 hours a day, no questions asked. They have like, it looks like a little mailbox, and you throw them in there. And then they're just not laying around. You know, they just, nobody can get into them, nobody can steal them. Um, and we tend to like to hold on to things, and we don't need those in our house, extras. And then we also have on April 26th, am I correct, uh, a drop-off event going on at Southgate Mall from 10 to 2. Perfect. Uh, and the people can always bring their medications by there. And it, of course, we'll be around if they have any questions. We can you know, help answer questions to, to help keep our kids safe and secure our prescription drugs better. That is very cool, you guys. Um, anything else? No, just reminding people that Wednesday the 16th, I know lots is going on in Missoula, but you're welcome to come to City Life and just, you know, again, we want to hear what your questions are and we don't, we don't know the answers. This is a community um, issue and we want to solve it as a community. So April 16th, 7 o'clock, City Life. And there's more information on our website at missoulaforum.org. You can always get on there, check out if you need to, you know, I don't remember the time, what time is it? Get on missoulaforum.org, check it out. And there, we also have a, another page on there that has some other information about keeping your prescription drugs safe. You know, we ask that people don't flush their prescription drugs, you know, dispose of them properly to keep our waterways safe and our water healthy and all that stuff. Wow, that's that's really great, you guys. That's a, that's a lot of stuff going on and uh, I wish you all the best with Thank your you. your I th I wish your campaign that's coming up. I yeah. mean, it seems like this is a huge effort. So, um, really great work, you guys, and thank you for being on the show. Thank great. you. Great. Thank you. Have a great day. Thanks. Hello. How would you like to win three hundred sixty-five dollars and many other prizes? MCAT is putting on the very first Creative Cat Film Contest. To enter, you must make a short video, no longer than two minutes in length and it must involve a cat either directly or indirectly. Send us your video to contest at MCAT.org or you can walk into our offices at MCAT at 500 North Higgins, Suite 105. As long as we can see your video, you're in. Hi, my name is Abraham Kim. I'd like to share with you our upcoming Mansfield Conference, Human Trafficking, Montana and the World, which will be held on April 15th through the 17th at the University Center on the campus of the University of Montana. For more information, please visit our website at www.mansfieldconference.com.
www.ohio.org. <laughs> All right, well, welcome back, everybody. Um, that was Brandy Tyree and Steve Schmidt from Missoula Forum for Children and Youth, and they are just talking about the upcoming Prescription Drug Misuse Prevention Week. So that is really cool. But we have some more, more events going on. Um, and today is Friday, the April 11th, and there's a lot of good stuff going on right now. Um, one of the big things happening today is the Free Admissions Day. It's happening at 10 a.m. at the Children's Museum in Missoula. And uh, basically, the admission is free today, and you can go on down to the Children's Museum to explore and learn and play, um, build a tunnel system at the water table, dig for dinosaur bones, and create our create their weekly craft project. So that's very cool. Another huge event that's coming up is the Shrine Circus. It's, it's happening at 3 p.m. at the University of Montana, so check that out. Ha do you know something about the Shrine Circus? Oh, oh, a little bit. Well, they usually like have all sorts of acts and they bring in a whole bunch of stuff in the, like last time I remember, they did, didn't they do the Adam Center? Yeah, it's happening in the Adams Center. Where they yeah. use all the nice stadium, and they all do all these performances in the middle. They have the giant um, cage where they drive motorcycles around in circles around people. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, awesome. So that's happening today at 3 p.m. There's also um, silk screening tonight. If you're into silk screening, that's going to be at 5.30 p.m. at the Zoo Town Arts Community Center. And tonight we've got a band. So let's show you a little bit of that band. So what is this band, Josh? This is the uh, Yonder Mountain String Band, and they're going to be performing at 8 p.m. at the Wilma Theater. So that should be pretty awesome. Yeah. And okay, and then we'll move on to Saturday. So Saturday morning, Run for the Trees. It's at 9 a.m. at McCormick Park. It's a uh, 5K and 10K to uh, support Missoula's urban forest. And so that's going to be really cool for all you runners and people out there trying to get exercise. Uh, another big thing happening is the Growing the Garden City exhibit. Um, it's opening tomorrow at 1 p.m. at the Historical Museum at Fort Missoula. Um, here's a, a little picture of what they've got going on at the Historical Museum at Fort Missoula. But basically, it's going to be uh, all the history of Missoula, how it started oh. and everything. And how the Hughes Garden is the reason why we're called the Garden State, isn't that right? That is right, yeah. So that's going to be really cool. That's going to be at the Historical Museum at Fort Missoula. And then another really big thing coming up is the uh, 37th International the Wildlife, Wildlife Film, Film Festival. Festival. Yeah, and, and <laughs> here is a here is a trailer from uh, one of the... Uh, the videos that or the movies that they're going to be showing it's called flight of the of the butterflies so let's take a look at that the monarch butterfly a true marvel of nature at the center of an age old mystery an extraordinary journey that spans not only miles, but generations. Across a continent with a magical destination. Come unlock the secrets. Experience the flight of the butterflies. Wow. Coming soon. Yeah. <laughs> so that that's going to be one of the feature films that they're showing at the International. It's the 37th International Wildlife Film Festival. Uh, pretty pretty major film festival happening in Missoula. And uh, 
to celebrate uh, the International Film Festival, they've got the Wild Walk Parade, which is going to be at 12 p.m. in downtown Missoula. It starts at the X's. Here is a little scene from uh, the Wild Walk Parade. Let's take a look. <laughs> Yeah, so a lot of people dress up as uh, animals, animals, as you can see. What is that? A uh, jackal? There's an elephant. And then there's, there's a real a tiny elephant. elephant. There's yeah. the big, wow. Wow, that's huge. That's really awesome. I can't expect anything less from the next walkabout, for sure. Yeah, it should be really cool. So, and that's happening Sunday morning, and you can meet... Um, at the Red X's and be a part of the parade at noon. Um, and then there's also some other stuff going on. Uh, there is the uh, Help Create a Forest. So they're going to be creating a synthetic forest in the basement of the Zootown Arts Community Center, and that's going to be at noon as well. There's also the JDRF Walk to Cure Diabetes, and that's 2 p.m., and that starts at the Dorn Blazer Track and Field. So if you want to do some more exercising for the cause of uh, curing diabetes, you should check that out. And then the final event that I'm going to talk about um, is on Sunday, and it is the 2014 Peacemaker Celebration, and we had a we had the uh, recipient of that wa award as a guest uh, on Wednesday show, and that was Claudia Brown, and she is the uh, RPC Coordinating Council in Missoula Peace Quilters. Has um, yeah, she's the uh, she spent years leading the charge to save our planet and address climate change. So she is a really big deal, and she works for Transition Missoula, and we had her on on Wednesday show. So yeah. So yeah, those are the events that, that are going on this weekend. There's a lot of great stuff happening. Yeah. Um, yeah, speaking of a lot of great stuff happening, um, MCAT, we just did our orientation. We had a good turnout. We're always offering um, training for those interested in being a part of MCAT. Basically, being a part of MCAT allows you to um, check out equipment that you cannot afford or um, don't want to afford to make your own um, movies, videos, and all that stuff. And why not make a video? Because we were doing... Um, the Creative, the Creative Cat, Cat Film Contest, Contest, and there is the High School Film Festival, I mean, Western Montana High School Film Festival, to be more clerical. Precise, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, they're all ending next week. It's sad. How much How much does it cost to uh, be a member of MCAT? Be a member of MCAT? Mmm, $40 for the first term, so no, it's no more expensive than going to Costco. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then the every year after that is $20. That's awesome. And, yeah. And how many... I mean, what kind of services do you provide? We provide we great provide? services um, from equipment checkout, studio. You can use the studio that we're in right now to tape your shows. But um, I got to move on because I got a big issue where we, I want to talk about, and that is Title One. And Title One is a, I'll have you queued up for me. It's under the MCPS um, comments. Oh, up. All right. So this one. It, there's a bunch of comments about people who are uh, against um, removal of Title I at Hellgate High School because they did a feeder pattern and uh, the funding for Title I would be going to Big Sky High School. But the issue is is that um, Hellgate High School would be cut funding for Title I. And basically Title I is a step up, I mean like the best way to describe it is a step up from um, special ed uh -huh. and it's a special like elective for kids who just need the extra help yeah. to get through school some kids who have problems reading writing math just like trying to help them through school through hands-on education and I think a lot of these people kind of voice their opinion about just how passionate they are about it so I'll just let you hit full screen and we'll be ready to go Let's not eliminate a program at Hellgate, which means the difference between dropping out and graduating for that group of students. Do the right thing to provide educational services to these students. Continue funding Title I at Hellgate by using the more accurate feeder pattern. 
Thank you. Title I has given me the opportunity to make up the credit, allowing me to participate in a college preparatory internship this summer. I may not be fully enrolled in the Title I curriculum like some of my peers, but I have personally reaped positive benefits and academic help by having this program available. But this issue extends from not only my personal experience. I have seen the program give valuable aid to economically disadvantaged students and given them the support needed to graduate. The loss of the Title I program entails huge disadvantages for not only my school district but also my peers. Students just like me who have hopes of graduating. We are fearful of what will become of these students in not only testing situations but of their future literacy and math abilities without these services available to them. At present, we at Hellgate have witnessed fewer and fewer elective courses for students being offered to low-achieving students with disabilities. By not qualifying for Title I funds, this will, the end, this will be the end to yet another elective that our students can take that not only addresses their deficiencies, but gives these students a fair chance at passing required coursework like English and Math. You guys are tossing data around, but this isn't data. These are human beings, and the difference, you say our highest poverty school, well, when you look at the difference between the highest poverty school and the next one down, that's really not very much, and it's not very justifiable. Kids do not get cured from, from reading disabilities. You know, we do great things for them when they're in grade school and middle school, we can't pull that net out from under them. And Hellgate was a great fit for my son. And I, yeah, next year he won't be there. But it doesn't mean that I just look the other way and say, well, at least my son got it. I'm here because I care about kids and I wanna do what's right for kids. I'm really disappointed that you're even considering any other pattern. I can't believe it. Where is the logic in this? When you consider that this other method eliminates hundreds of children from receiving these benefits, how can you in good conscience even consider it? I'm really concerned. I don't see that we get support at Hellgate for our programs. I just don't. And I don't feel that we have representation that is doing something to bring that support. When it's possible for us to get it, it seems like you're stealing it away. I'm hurt by this. I'm hurt that you would even consider this as another option when funding more high schools is a possibility. Where does that make sense to our kids, to our teachers, to our community? I just, I just can't grasp that. I'm also a Hellgate graduate. I graduated in 1978. And when I left that school, I clearly remember the last thought in my head, sitting in, we used to use the gym, for graduation. I said, I will never set foot in this, you know what word, building again. Here I am, and guess what? It's the best place in the world to be. But you start taking away our funding for things that make a difference to kids that matter, I won't feel like I can say that anymore. So please don't take that away from me. I'm proud of my school. Thank you. We want to do the very best for staff and the very best for as many students as possible. Uh, again, you, you did a wonderful job and your voice has been heard and uh, we will move forward from this point. Thank you. And that was the main topic of last night's budget work session at the Missoula County Public Schools. Wow, that was really heated. Yeah, there's a lot of heat um, when it comes to Title I, and it was nothing but beneficial towards a lot of the kids in school. Yeah. But, of course, budget is always the budget. Yeah. And just because you, you want to have something behind it, sometimes you just don't have the funding for it. But then again... Um, trying to split funding between the um, two schools for sure. I mean, they're trying not only, I mean like a lot of them suggested that you shouldn't just do funding for one school like Big Sky, that's the one that would be getting the Title I funding and cutting the funding from Hellgate. And if you split it up, there's always gonna be a couple of those kids who are gonna suffer mm -hmm. some of those losses. Yeah. But that's just, 
I don't know. It's so, just a, so both sides of it are, are kind of difficult. Yeah, but right now they're just going to work. It's a budget work session. Uh -huh. People voice their opinion, and now they're going to work through it and see what it is. But there was a lot of data given to us. Um, you guys can look up the agenda online at the Missoula County Public School website for more information. Um, just all around, a lot of stuff going on with the Missoula County Public Schools. A lot of um, passion for Title I. But if you want more information about the videos we've shown today and more, log on to our Facebook page um, called Wake Up Missoula. Straightforward, just type in Wake Up Missoula and you can find it on YouTube. We're all over the internet basically. Yeah, and if you want to get involved and interact with the show and voice your opinion, uh, you know, it's up to us to give you the objective story, but if you want to voice your own opinion, you can always comment on our wall on our Facebook page and always tell us what you want to watch. I mean, tell you tell us what you want to see and voice your opinion on, on the things that we have shown. Yep. Well, I was going to show a little bit from the vault, but we've ran out of time, so I'm going to have to say for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramph. And I'm Josh Minnie. Thanks for watching. Yeah, thank you, and enjoy the rest of your morning, day, whatever, weekend. Way, what yeah. a way to kick off the weekend. Yeah, what a little a controversy, little Missoula forms, substance of abuse Jeez. prevention. Yeah. Just a lot of great. And a lot of events happening this weekend. A so. lot of events. All right, we'll see you guys later. Yep, see you later.